In this F5 video, we will create an identity-aware proxy configuration using guided configuration for the Big IP System Access Policy Manager. What is Access Guide Configuration? It provides simple, workflow-driven configuration templates that cover common use case scenarios. It is easy to create Big IP System configurations using the guided configuration interface. Configurations can be updated later to add servers and applications. Identity-aware proxy configuration using AGC delivers secure access to applications based on the principle of never trust, always verify. It grants access to applications by evaluating real-time device posture, user identity, and step-up authentication. It authenticates, authorizes, and encrypts every access request. The steps to create an identity-aware proxy are as follows. Configure the device posture settings of endpoints. Create a new virtual server. Configure authentication servers. Configure single sign-on authentication. Configure two applications and their pool configurations. Categorize the applications into a group. Configure the rules for accessing the applications or groups. Review the customization settings. And then deploy the application. Some steps, such as SSO, are optional and are not required for basic configuration. Let's begin creating an identity-aware proxy configuration, so log into the Big IP system and configure the device posture. Click Access, Guided Configuration to access these templates. Click Zero Trust, and then click Identity-Aware Proxy. The welcome screen displays the workflow for the single proxy, multi-proxy, and the different objects you can create. Required configuration on the right lists the additional configurations, which may be required before you begin. Click Next. The device posture will enable you to configure the details of endpoints before allowing them to connect to the network. Type a name for your configuration. Click Enable the device posture check to enable the device posture check by the F5 inspection agent. This checkbox displays the CA Trust Certificate list. Select the Trusted Certificate Authority from the list to verify the signature of the client devices. To define a new posture for the client devices, type a name and select the device, operating system, browser, and endpoint settings for the required access control. To get help about the option, click the little I icon next to it. The virtual server is a traffic manager represented by an IP address. It directs traffic based on your configuration. In the virtual server step, create a new virtual server or use an existing server. To create a new server, enter the destination address and specify the port and the redirect port. Select the client SSL profile for managing client-side SSL traffic or create a new one. Most steps have the Show Advanced Settings link, which displays the additional settings that can be configured. In the User Identity step, configure the authentication servers for the clients. In this step, you are creating both an Active Directory authentication server and an OAuth authentication server so that the system can process both types of requests. Multi-factor authentication adds two-factor authentication to any VPN login and requires users to present more than one form of identification before they are granted system application access. Added configuration allows the integration with various multi-factor authentication providers such as Azure, Okta, Duo Security, RSA with Radius, SafeNet, and Symantec. In MFA, you can configure the multi-factor authentication. This is an optional step. Single sign-on is an optional step that permits one set of login credentials across multiple applications. The following methods of SSO are available. HTTP Basic, Kerberos, NTLM v2, and OAuth Bearer.
Click Enable Single Sign-On to create an SSO configuration or to modify the outgoing HTTP request. In the Application step, you define the applications and the pool configurations for load balancing the traffic. Type the domain name of the application and IP addresses of the servers into the pool. Click Add to add the applications. We will repeat the same steps for the next application. Name the authentication domain. Click Save and Next. The Application Group step lets you create groups and assign applications to them. This is again an optional step. In this video, we will assign our applications to a group we are calling Group 1. In the Contextual Access step, you define rules that demand the minimum acceptable level of authentication for accessing the applications or application groups. The access policy is configured on a per-application or application group basis based on your selections in this step. Select the resource type, and then select the configured resource from the list. Select the configured device posture and the authentication method. Select the configured HTTP header and the single sign-on object. Select Enable Additional Checks to enable triggers and select a fallback action. Click Add to configure triggers for evaluating contextual information and select a match action. The customization step lets you customize the language and the look and feel of the screens that your users encounter when they interact with the access policy. Here on the summary screen, you can review and edit your selections and then click Deploy to deploy your application. Once deployed, click the View Per Request Access Policy to view your policy and visual policy editor. You can further edit and add more servers, applications, groups, and trigger rules to your policy using Guided Configuration UI. Based on the configured triggers, the Access Policy will protect you and your business applications by authenticating every user and device request. In this video, we have configured the device posture settings of endpoints, created a new virtual server, configured authentication servers, configured SSO authentication, configured two applications in their pool configurations, categorized the applications into a group, configured rules for accessing the applications or groups, reviewed the customization settings, and deployed the application. Hope you have enjoyed this video from F5 Networks. If you have any additional questions or need more support, you can visit support.f5.com.